hear me clearly you guys really need to stock up because things are getting really bad out here a lot of things that we love to eat is being recalled now we know what they just did with the baby formula and all of that that was a game all in itself now they didn't took jiff which we know is America's number one peanut butter. They didn't took that. Now they're taking strawberries due to hepatitis A. They are going to recall us into a food shortage. So this is the time to really go shopping for the things you love and the things that you need. Because every week or every other day, something that we love to eat or whatever will be getting pulled off the shelves. So please prioritize getting food and getting the things you need. I said this before, but I'm saying it again. Please stock up. Shalom. Kohleimla Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rekakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and the Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work and truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles with great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. My servants shall eat. I mentioned during the previous lesson that nothing occurs on the earth without the spiritual decree going forth in the heavenly realm. The Bible says that a sparrow does not even fall from the sky without the Father's approval. And I'm paraphrasing. So, we're entering into a time. Let's go ahead and read this. Matthew 10. Matthew 10. We're going to go to verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body, in hell. <clears throat> when is your soul or your spirit and body together? Under the sun, here on earth. Let's read it again. Matthew 10 and 28. And fear not which, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? Well, the Most High has power over life and death. So when you know that, it brings in a sense of peace. You're not stressed out or worried. Hair falling out. Walking around eating your fingernails down to the nub because you're stressed out. The true preparation is the preparation of the heart and mind. A spiritual preparation. That's the true preparation. <clears throat> Let's go here next. I'm going to go to Lamentations 4. Let's go up to verse 8. Book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 8. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaved to their bones. It is withered. It has become like a stick. And this happened to Israel during the Babylonian captivity. So what people have dark skin? 
that went into captivity. And we know that Judah fell and went into captivity under the Babylonians or the southern kingdom. Lamentations 4, verse 9. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. So famine is a very slow, gruesome, brutal death where your body begins to feed off itself, eating within its interior skin and fat lining, interior lining of your stomach. That's why you see... um, when you see photos or videos of people that are starving, that interior stomach lining gets eaten away and their belly swell up where it looks like they're eating, but it's the swelling of the belly. Lamentations 4, verse 10. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. To sodden means to boil. Israelite women were boiling their babies because of the famine. So this, what is this barbarianism thing called? Eating human flesh cannibalism the bible says what has been will be again and there is no new thing under the sun so this is why if you're in the spirit you're turning from wickedness evil and praying that the lord will have mercy in the day of evil the day of bad times and judgments But in Lamentations 2 and verse 19, Arise, cry out in the night, in the beginning of the watches. Pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thine hands towards him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall the women eat their fruit and children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? So this judgment is reserved to the wicked, starting with wicked Israelites followed by the wicked. Eat them. So famine, when you read, let's go ahead and get that. Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah 15. Most High is apportioning out judgments. See? Look at the title. Judgment must come. Jeremiah 15, verse 1. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be towards this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Rebellious Israelites. Verse 2. And it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Then shall thou tell them, Thus saith the Lord, Such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. 
FEMA camps, internment facilities, famine, being murdered and trodden down as the mire in the streets. So these are apportioned judgments being corrected in measure. Go to Ezekiel 14. Before we do, we're going to go to Isaiah 65. The Most High has care for his elect, a remnant. Isaiah 65, verse 10. Let's go to verse, we got to go up. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not. For a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. A remnant is going to be preserved. When you go into that word remnant, it means those that remain or a remainder that are preserved from the said perils. Verse 9, And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there, occupying the kingdom of heaven. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is a time to be cleaned up, so to speak, washed by the word. Go to verse, so that seed out of Jacob. This is a bloodline. It's not talking about a whole wide world. The elect of Israel is going to become rulers in the kingdom to come. Isaiah 65, verse 10. And Sharon shall be a foal of flocks, and the valley of Akor, a place for the herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You can't wait till this earth is raining missiles and then screaming, hey Lord, I repent, forgive me, and it's raining missiles. It's too late. You can't say, hey, Lord, I repent. An evil E is coming in like a flood with martial law troops. So the time to repent and come back to the word is now. It was due last year. And Sharon shall be a foe of flocks and the valley of Akor a place for the herds to lie down in, or my people that have sought me. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number, feeding into a wicked, corrupt system. And those troops is talking about the military of the oppressors. Therefore, will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Evil, transgression of the law, wickedness, iniquities, walking in great pride. Let's go down to verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, 
my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. This is why we teach every day, because we're making haste to turn unto the Lord and to seek his face while he is near. His face is his image, is the breath of life, his word. The Lord has care for his elect. A remnant is going to be saved. An elect is going to dwell and lie down in green pasture, be at rest and be fed and be at peace. And the Bible says, none shall make him afraid. Let's close out here. And go to Ezekiel 14. Let's go down to verse 21. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, verse 21. For thus saith the Lord God, How much more when I sin for sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beasts and the pestilence, to cut off from it man and beast, sickness, disease, hunger, thirst, troops, different kinds or multiple sorts of judgments. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. This is the remnant that's going to inherit peace that's going to occupy thrones. Let's close out Ezekiel 14, verse 23. And they shall comfort you when ye see their ways and their doings. And ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. Perfect balance. The Lord is known by the judgments which he have made. And he's showing us what? Mercy through the remnant, elect, that are going to shoot forth and praise and exalt and glorify his holy name. So it's twofold. He's showing wrath and mercy. He makes peace and create evil, a perfect balance. For the Lord's servants shall eat his elect that fear his name and that tremble at his word. So the preparations to make are more so spiritual. Yes, okay to stock up. But the biggest preparation is making our treasures in heaven, preparing our mind, being purged and clean by the word. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rekwakadash, Barakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Pam Yasharela and the Bad Babao. We got next. Lord willing. Shalom.